Okay, so page 491. We're looking at numbers 21 through 26. Let's look at number 21. Find the standard power gain in decimals for the given power output. Okay, so we have an output. We're not given an input. So since they, they're not giving an input power, what they're doing is they're saying what is the standard power gain given. Um, what they're doing is they're comparing that power level to one milliwatt. So for number 21, they want to know 20 milliwatts. Yes, compared to one milliwatt. It's something called DBMs, which I'm going to talk about a little bit today. That's just going to be log of 20 milliwatts over 1 milliwatt. So um, log base 10, what is that, 1.3, so that's going to be 13.01 dB. How did you guys do with 27? Did you get to them? Not so much. Okay. Let's take a look at those. Those are looking for missing pieces. We're actually solving equations um, with these missing pieces. So at number 27, we're given that the input power is 1 milliwatt. We're given that the power gain is 20 dB. We're asked to find the output power. So we've got 20 is equal to 10 log P out over 1 milliwatt. So we're solving this equation here. We solve it by first dividing by 10. We get rid of that. We have to isolate the log just like we would anything else. Now, remember what we used logs for when we were solving equations. If we had an equation that was like 2 equals 10 to the power of x, we did a log base 10, didn't we? That's how we got rid of that 10 to the power of. Well, here we're, at, we're doing the opposite. We have the log. It's a log base 10. So to get rid of that log base 10, we're doing 10 to the power of that. So the 10 to the power of and the log cancel out, even though they're in the opposite order now. That leaves us with P out over 1 milliwatt. Over here, 10 to the power of 2 is 100. And now, of course, we solve this by just multiplying by the 1 milliwatt. Realistically, we didn't have to multiply by the 1 because multiplying by the 1 isn't going to change anything. But it was the units that was important. We need to get the units over here. So this is 100 milliwatts is the output power. Any questions there? So let's take a look at one that's a little bit different. Let's see if they have one that's asking. Here we go. Number 35 is asking for the input. So for number 35, we have the output power is 10 milliwatts. We have a gain, actually it's a loss, a negative 6 dB. So it's a 6 dB loss. We're asked to find the input power now. So we set that up. We've got negative 6 is our power gain, or 6 decimal loss, equals 10 times the log of... 10 milliwatts over, we're looking for the power input. Now, what do we know about P in and P out here? Or P in is related to P out? Since this is a negative decibel here, that means it's a power loss. So that's saying that P 
PN is bigger or smaller than P out? Bigger, because it has to be a loss. The output has to be smaller than the input. So input's bigger than the output. Now we're going to solve this. We're going to divide by 10. Negative 6 divided by 10 is negative 0.6 equals log of 10 MV over PN. And we solve by getting rid of the log by doing what? 10 to the power of. So 10 to the power of negative 6 or negative 0.6 is 0 0.2512. Equals, now here the log is gone, it's just 10 milliwatts over PN. How do we solve for PN? Probably the easiest way here is to do that, make it a proportion. So we're going to solve 1 times, my 1 disappeared on my 10. 1 times 10 divided by the 0.2512. So 1 times 10 is 10 divided by that previous answer. It's going to give us 40, 39.81. That's going to have to be milliwatts, is my input power. What do you guys think? Good stuff? I'm going to have you guys try a couple in your notes real quick. So, the first one I'm going to have you try. Your input power. Your input power is going to be... 15 milliwatts. Your power gain is going to be 0.35. Find the power out. The second one I'm going to have you try. Your power out is 120 milliwatts. Your power gain is 1.8. Find your input power. So I'm going to pause this for a second, let you guys try those. Okay, so first one up here, 0.35 equals 10 log. Going for P out over 15 milliwatts. So we divide by the 10. So 0 0.035 equals log P out over 15 milliwatts. We do our 10 to the power of 10 to the power of power, power of point is 1.084 equals P out over 15 milliwatts. Then our last step, we're just going to multiply by the 15 milliwatts. So we get 16.2. Milliwatts. How many of you had that? Anybody have any questions on that one? Okay. Second one here. We have our gain of 1.8 equals 10 times the log of we know P out is 120 milliwatts over PN. We're looking for the input power this time. Once again, we divide by 10. So 0.18 equals log of 120 over PN. I'm dropping the milliwatts because we know our units are milliwatts here. 10 to the power of. 10 to the power of 0.18 is 1.514.
equals 120 over Pn. So again, we're going to make this into a portion, and we'll cross multiply and divide. So 1 times 120, which is 120, divided by the 1.514. 79.28. That is in milliwatts equals Pn. What do you think? Not so bad? Okay. Why don't you try these two in your notes? Number one. Your input voltage is 18 millivolts. You have a gain of 4 dB. Find the output voltage. Our second one. We have an output voltage of 40 M millivolts. We have a gain of a negative 2.5 dB. Find the input voltage. I'll pause and let you guys have some time to do that. So for this first one, we have that gain of 4 dB. What's going to be different in our formula here? It's 20 because we're going off of voltage instead of off of power. So 20 log, looking for V out over 18 millivolts. Divide by the 20, we have 0.2 equals log. I'm just going to label it, uh, we'll go V out over 18. We're going to drop the millivolts. We'll do 10 to the power, 10 to the point 0.2 is 1.585, which is going to equal the V out over 18. So you multiply by the 18, you get 28.53 millivolts is our output voltage. How many of you had that one? How many of you missed the, it should be 20 instead of 10? That was kind of to be expected. So. so then this one, you have the negative 2.5 equals 20 again. Log, we're given the output voltage of 40 millivolts over, looking for the input this time. Divide by 20. We get a negative point, was that one, two, five? Equals log of 40 over our input voltage. 10 to the power of, is point seven five oh. Log is gone, that equals 40 over V. And of course, we'll make that a proportion and cross multiply and divide. This over one, one times 40 is 40, divided by 0.750, 53.34. That's in millivolts. That's our input voltage. What do you think? Good stuff? Not so sure. Let's have you try to solve this equation here. Actually, we're going to do this. We're going to do 500. That was 10.
try that one. See what you come up with for this. So we have to isolate the log first. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to divide by the 10. So we've got 50 equals log base 5 of 3x minus 2. Now what do we have to do? After the log base 5, I'm going to do that by doing an exponent with a base of 5. 5 to the power of cancels out the log base 5. So we have 5 to the power of 50. Yes, that is a huge number. Throws us into scientific notation, actually. 8.88 times 10 to the 34 means that's 8. Well, you have to move the decimal point over to the right 34 spots. That's, that's a huge number, right? Okay. Then you would have to do, then you'd have 3x minus 2 equals that. You have to add 2 and divide by 3. Let's try one that actually come out to a reasonable number. I was waiting for somebody to complain about that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You've been taught to just be quiet and take it. <laughs> Try that one. Where do we start? We're going to subtract the 18. Good. So 36 equals 12 times the log base 3, 5x minus 1. Then what do we do? Find out the 12. 3 equals log base 3, 5x minus 1. And then? to the power of, right? So 3 to the power of 3 is 27 equals 5x minus 1 and then add 1, 28 equals 5x and then divide out by 5. 5.6 5 equals x. How many of you had that? How many of you are on your way there? How many had no hope of ever getting there? Any questions on that? Okay. Our next phase then to move on to, we're going to look more at these power gains. But as we saw, the standard power measurement in, the, in a couple of problems in this one, um, when you're dealing with a standard power measure, a lot of times you just look at measuring the output power. So if you want to do basically it's a power level is what you're measuring. And that power level is going to be in what's called DBMs. What a DBM stands for is a decibel milliwatt. You see most of the problems we've done are milliwatts, not full watts. You guys saw this, you got a whole lot of power in any electronic device is pretty high output. What a decibel milliwatt does is that it's taking its power level, it's an absolute power level, and it's compared to 10, again, because we're dealing with watts now, times the log of whatever our power is, whether it's usually it's an output power, compared to 1 milliwatt. So it's a standard power measurement. So if we have a device that is putting out 17 milliwatts, that power level is 10 times the log of 17 over 1. Now, since that was in milliwatts, I was able to drop my units because it's milliwatts over milliwatts. The units canceled out. So that's simply going to calculate 10 times the log 
of 17. I don't have to do the divided by 1. It gives me 12.304. DBMs. So when you hear the word, the, the term decibels, you have to be careful. We've already seen you've got to, you've got to know whether it's a power gain, power out versus power in, or if it's a voltage gain, voltage out versus voltage in. Here you have to know whether it's a comparison or if it's just a standard. Usually that's why we put the DBM is telling us that this is a standard, not, a, not an out versus in. So if we have an output power of 300 milliwatts, find the power gain, the, uh, the standard power. So that's going to be what? Okay, yes, 10, 10 times the log of 300 milliwatts over one milliwatt. Yep. And yeah, 10 times the log, 300. Okay, 24.76 dBm. What's that? Uh, so we have, let's, we've got a power level here, power gain of 3.2 dBm. Find that output power. How would I set this up? P over one, there we go. And so of course I'm going to grab my 10. 0.32 equals log. Why did I just write P there instead of P over one? P over one is just P. Really all we need out of this is the fact that it's milliwatts. Is that a unit? So as long as we remember our units are gonna be milliwatts, we don't have to worry about the over one. So now then we do have to do 10 to the power of, 10 to the power of 0 0.32, 2.089. That is in milliwatts. That is our output power. Well, as we saw yesterday, as we looked at yesterday, a measuring power requires both a voltage and a current or a voltage and a resistance. Um, both resistance and current involve interrupting the circuit, either shutting the power off and never it dead, or breaking the circuit to put a meter within the circuit. So we like to go off of just voltage level. That's where you get the term DBMV, which stands or decibel, millivolt. The DBMV standard is a standard measurement, just like the DBM. Only instead of comparing it at the level to a single milliwatt, we're comparing a voltage level to a single millivolt. So the power level in DBMV is twenty times the log of whatever that voltage output is compared to one millivolt. So if we have a voltage output of 270 millivolts, find that power level. Well, it's simply going to be 20 times the log of 270 millivolts, or one millivolt. Now again, the millivolts cancel out. It gives me just 20 times log of 270. 
U.S. 48.63. That is going to be DBMV. So what if I give you that we have a power gain voltage, the little V means it's the voltage of 1.92 DBMV. I want to find that output voltage. Tell me what to do. So 1.92 equals 20 log, we're just gonna put V over one, which is just V. So yes, we are gonna divide by 20. Which is gonna give us 0 0.096 equals log of V and then ten to the power of, right? So ten to the power of point zero nine six. One point two four seven. That is gonna be millivolts equals our voltage. Now as we're looking at these, some things you want to notice. Find that power gain voltage wise, the voltage gain when V out is 18 millivolts. Then I'm going to have you find that gain when V out is 36 millivolts. I'm going to try those two in your notes quick. So let's see if you get this. This is going to be 20 times the log of 18, right? Twenty five point one oh five DB MV. This one down here is going to be what? Twenty times log of thirty six. Thirty one point one three. Alice Blue Dog. Thirty one point one two six. DBMV. Let's do a third one. Let's find that power gain when V out is 72 millivolts. So we're going to pump that in, it's just 20 times the log of 72 over 1. I know I'm getting a little sloppy with my units there, but we know it's 72 millivolts over 1 millivolt, so really don't need it in there. And that does come up 37.147. How did I know, when before pump said the point, that that was going to be my answer? Well, when we're dealing with a logarithmic scale, Doubling turns into a constant increase. Here, we doubled from 18 to 36. This went up by 6.021 dBmV, right? We doubled again from 36 to 72. Guess what? It went up by 6.021 dBmV. This causes a lot of problems in the field because you throw a tester on something and let's say that the required signal level
is 60 dBmV. Put your tester on there. And it tests dBmV. That's only a 10% loss, right? Yeah, it looks like a 10% loss. You've gone from 60 down to 54. You've lost six, which if, you, if this were a regular scale, linear scale, 60 losing six would be a 10% loss. But it is not because this is a logarithmic scale. And in DBMV, a six DBMV is losing half of your signal. And this has been an issue. Um, technicians will see, oh, we're down to 54, so we're going to turn up an amplifier. To make up for it. Rather than finding where that signal loss is occurring, they'll just turn up an amplifier. Well, how much have they now amplified that signal? To get that increase from 54 to 60, they are doubling the amplification. Anybody tell me what the uh, big drawback of doubling amplification is? Whenever you amplify a signal, you also amplify the noise. In other words, the distortion. So any distortion in that signal, any noise or static in that signal is going to get amplified as well. So you've not only doubled the amplification of the signal, signal you have doubled the amount of noise that's going to be heard. Any questions? Okay, so out of that new packet I gave you guys last, There is page is it 459, 1 through 10, deals with the signal testing again. And then you can start taking a look. We haven't covered all of this yet. Page 464 through 465, 1 through 10. Tomorrow we'll talk a little bit more about this signal testing. And then we will also um, do a little bit of review for your test.